Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petitis. We're here at the Oakwood Village store. and We love being on the perennial runway. And today we are going to be talking about the sage family. Now, we have plenty of sages that are perennials, so that's kind of why we're here and stationed here. But we also have culinary sages and also annual sages. So we're gonna talk all about sages today and of course with spotlights first we want you to be successful growing them so we're going to start out with sun conditions so sun requirements for sage and this is all sages they really love full sun okay so six or more hours of direct sunlight on that plant don't get me wrong if you'd put it in part shade you know that four to six hour mark they probably do okay. It's just that they really can tolerate some good sunlight. Also, they can tolerate heat and drought once established. So that's really a great plant for those hot, dry, sunny areas, okay? Um, also with sages, and soil is pretty important here, obviously, when you want to be successful, but sages really prefer to have well-drained soil. And I know I say this a lot, it kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but well-drained, but moist soil. So if you think about it, moisture retentive soils have a lot of organic matter incorporated into them. So make sure that you do put some compost, peat moss, planting mix, whatever, so you can really incorporate that organic matter into the soil and have it well-drained yet moisture retentive. So that's always really good. But again, most of them can take some drier conditions once established, okay? Um, watering wise, it's standard. If you're growing these plants in the ground, you're looking at one inch of water once per week, okay? deep and thorough watering. So we'd love for you to run the soaker hose in the morning at the base of these plants, run it for a good half an hour to an hour, whatever gets you an inch of water, and then go ahead and let them utilize that water throughout that week during the summer, okay? Um, and that's basically a good watering for the salvia. And again, because they're a little bit more heat and drought tolerant, they don't need more than that. So if it does rain and rainfall has provided us with one inch of water during the week, guess what? You don't have to irrigate at all, so that's good. With salvia, there are so many different varieties and, and I was mentioning that this, this plant family is enormous. It really has just about less than a thousand different species. So there's a lot of salvia out there, but they come in all different shapes and sizes and packages and that includes propagation. So some of the culinary sages, some of the flowering sages, you certainly can start and, and germinate seeds for them. So that's something to think about if you'd like to propagate more. They also do, and most of them, regardless of what variety, they also do really well with tip cutting. So you can usually cut about a three to four inch tip on the plant, obviously not flowering. You wanna have a branch tip, okay, um, when it's not in flower, and go ahead and you can try to root those with some rooting hormone. And with the perennial varieties, they also divide fairly well. However, you want to make sure that you're dividing your meadow sages or perennial salvias actually in the springtime. The reason being is their root system does not take off and establish right away. So make sure that you're dividing in the spring, giving them some good, you know, composted soil, amended soil, and then go ahead and kind of baby them throughout the growing season so they establish well for you, okay? So that's something to keep in mind with propagation. Attribute wise, you cannot go wrong with the salvia family for attracting pollinators. Uh, especially your larger flowering types, your red types like salvia splendens here. Uh, the red flowering types, of course, are gonna be wonderful for attracting hummingbirds to your garden. The purples and the blues are still great for a number of different pollinators, including your butterflies and your bees. This family is actually under the umbrella of the mint family, okay? So when you feel sage stems, it's gonna have that four-sided square stem to it, which is indicative of a mint, okay? So you are going to have aromatic foliage for the most part, and uh, flowering also can be very aromatic with this family. 
I'll have to say with salvias, there's, there's so many different types. And so we'll, we'll start talking about some of our sages here. So in front of me are some culinary sages, okay? Um, these sages are really more um, native to the Mediterranean areas of Europe. I will have to say Burgarten sage is what you normally see at uh, Thanksgiving. You'll find it in stuffing and, and sausage and all those types of things. Um, we do use it in soups, but it's a fairly strong, fairly hearty type of herb. And so needless to see, you, you kind of see it more used in the fall and the winter time. I will tell you that sages are also, the dried sages are also being used as a um, mosquito repellent as well. So um, you can put dry sage leaves in a campfire or your fire pit and go ahead and burn them to help reduce your mosquitoes around or repel mosquitoes around you. So that's something to keep in mind. There's some beautiful foliage types in that culinary sage family. Uh, there's golden sage, which is that green and golden margin here. There's purple sage, which has a nice gray to green leaf, but also develops that nice deep purple color. And then also the tricolor sage. So this one's white, purple, and green, obviously. These sages do very, very nicely, giving us a great color throughout the season in the garden and also container gardens. And we'll often take the, the beautiful, colorful sages and plant them with some of our fall plant material. So we love them with our ornamental peppers. We love them with mums. We love them with all those fall plants. So including pansies and violas too. So keep those in mind. This one right here, this is pineapple sage, and this is actually um, indigenous to Mexico. This is a tall sage, green leaf, but boy, when you crush these leaves, oh my gosh, you get a wonderful pineapple fragrance. It takes quite some time to get this one to flower, but when it does grow up, usually late summer, you'll start to see these beautiful scarlet red tubes on it. And it is a wonderful hummingbird attractant at that time of the season. So this one's great for tropical drinks and um, desserts, and you can throw it in, in fruit salads and so forth. So pineapple sage is also a really great one to grow in containers or in the garden. I will tell you that the culinary sages are not hardy in Northeast Ohio. Um, so they do require some winter protection, um, uh, basically bringing them inside, indoors over the winter to grow them. So you can grow them on a cool windowsill indoors if you're able to do some herbs indoors in the kitchen, that's always wonderful. You can continue to cut and use. Okay. Flowering annual sages. So this one you might be familiar with. This is a mealy cup sage. Terrible name, but it is one of the annual sages. This one will bloom and have nice tall spikes of this color here is actually a new perennial. Um, so this is unplugged I, I knew I'd forget it, unplugged, so blue, okay? And so it's just starting to fill out. And so the annual mealy cup sages, they do take some time to flower. Probably one of the classic varieties that we've grown for a very long time is called Victoria Blue, if you've ever heard of that before. And we'd use it as kind of a middle of the border annual plant or backdrop plant for some of the shorter annuals out there. Um, blues, whites, and light blues are really what you see in the mealy cup sage family. They are very good as far as deer resistant in the annual department, okay? So keep this plant in mind. This is another annual sage or salvia, and this one is actually called blue suede shoes. And this is a little bit newer from Proven Winners as well. These plants can get fairly bushy and also extend out a little bit taller, probably around the 24, 30 inch mark. What we love about this blue suede shoes are those really long tubular flowers that you'll see with most of your sage family, um, but also these very, very dark calyxes. So there was a variety called blue and black or black and blue a number of years ago. And this one is kind of a good replacement for that where you do 
do still get that dark, dark purpley black color and also the bright blue flowers, okay? So again, annual types. This is the one that you're real familiar with, that red salvia splendens. Again, beautiful red flowering here. This is lighthouse and it's a taller red salvia. So again, it could be more of a background plant to some shorter annuals, can go in container gardens. All of these can make great container garden plants, again, for sunny areas. Of all these and deer resistance, I want you to be aware that the salvia splendens gets nibbled on. It's not as aromatic or as fuzzy as some of the other salvias and this one too. So watch out, you might have to protect these um, salvias, annual salvias from some browsing deer and bunnies. Just be aware of that. Now, let's move into perennial meadow sages, and this is salvia nemorosa or superba. There's a lot of hybrid varieties in the perennial types, and they're all right next to me here. Their colors range from a nice dark blue, purple, lighter blue, white, and then also a rose. So you're going to find them in that cool color category, typically with your meadow sages. What's great about meadow sages for us in the perennial area, again, not only because they're heat and drought tolerant once they're established and they attract all the pollinators and they're deer and bunny resistant because they really do have a very strong aroma to them, but they are just very dependable bloomers and repeat bloomers in the perennial garden. Um, in general, when we see the salvias and sages come up, they do develop all those flowering spikes, smaller little flowers, but very profuse on the spikes. And then as they fade, the flowers fade in color, again, they have all these dark calyxes here that really still give them a good show out in the garden. We usually recommend when your perennial salvia fade that after they're about 75% bloom through, you can go ahead and cut them back. So I'm gonna show you that. And really, um, normally I would take like grass shears and just sh snip the whole top off. But with pruners, if you just grab the tops of the, the flowers and just start pruning underneath, a handful underneath, and so I just took a handful off and go ahead and fertilize this. Once you clip the entire tops off, this plant will typically repeat bloom two and three times during the growing season. So you'll have salvia continue to bloom, bud and bloom for you throughout the growth. Um, so needless to say, that's a really, really easy thing to do with the sage family. Um, let me show you flowers and varieties here. So this one that I actually just clipped is New Dimension Blue. And I really do like it because of that deep purpley blue coloring, but also these dark purple calyx that they have here. We have New Dimension, nope, not New Dimension, sorry. This is Lyrical Rose, beautiful pinky lavender color there. And then also Lyrical White. So you'll see the white spikes and if you need to add a little bit of lighter color into the sunny border where you have a lot of hot colors, this is a good addition for you, okay? East Friesland is a classic variety. So that's this purple one here. Um, doesn't grow too tall, about 18 inches. Really, really nice to just kind of put front or mid border in a perennial garden. And of course, any of these will mix really well with cool colors or with really hot colors like your blanket flower daisies or beautiful hot colored lilies as well. This little one is Marcus. It's more of a lighter blue, but very short, usually about 10 inches. And it's the most compact out of all of the perennial meadow sage. And then back here is Caradonna. And if you want Caradonna, you want that impact. She's the tallest. So Caradonna, you're going to get this deep, dark purple stem, dark purple flowering as well, but also up to about 36 inches in the garden, okay? So lots of different sages out there. Just remember, full sun for these plants, a good well-drained, amended soil, 
that has a little bit of moisture retention. Um, feeding these guys, again, just like any of your perennial meadow sages, you're gonna feed them once in spring and once midsummer, typically with plant tone, or you could use Osmocote, that's fine too. Um, with the annual varieties, probably wanna feed them a little bit more often, um, especially if you're growing them in containers and that fertilizer sort of leaches out of that container a little bit more often as we irrigate or as the rain falls. So usually feeding once every, let's say four to six weeks is good for the annual varieties. And of course the culinary varieties too. We like to stick with those organic fertilizers and especially when we're harvesting and drying some of these herbs and using those. So. Um, Great family to work with, great family for pollinators, and also pretty decent as far as a deer-resistant plant too. Enjoy.